This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. So today I wanted to do a video kind of looking uh, quickly at some tips if you're going to be using FR, FR type stuff with the modeling rigs that we're interested in. Today I'm using the Helix and this is a DB Technologies Flexis which has an 8 inch driver in it. A very compact little boy. Um, I actually have these because I bought them for monitoring live so I'm in the live band that I play in. Um, the vocalist has one and I have one on the, the side of the stage just giving me the front of house straight back at me so I can have some idea of what it might be sounding like out front. We are told that FRFR is the way to go with modelling solutions. I'm not totally convinced to be honest with you. There's a few kind of schools of thought with it. Like one of the things is that people say they want to hear what is going out to the front of house. Um, and so in theory, if you can get it to sound good on this monitor, then probably you're not gonna have any nasty surprises out of front of house unless it's your sound guy doing weird stuff. Uh, I do think actually it's a really good idea to get used to kind of tweaking for an FRFR monitor. And I'll just show you some, some of the tips for that if you're interested in that. But other ways that are just as valid, plugging into the power amp return of a tube amplifier, Give that a go. I've been doing that for quite a while. What I'm doing more recently is um, just going and having like a hybrid setup. I've got other videos on that with a real amplifier and the modeling just goes to the front of the house. So either way though, the front of the house needs to be receiving a signal which is possibly a little bit different to how the factory presets might be set. So I personally tend to set things darker knowing that through a speaker like this for some reason what you're going to get as you turn things up is an accentuation of the the fizzy the high stuff all of the things that i think make us think well that sounds super digital i'll just try and demonstrate this with a microphone here just one thing to really bear in mind here before maybe you get into this too much is to remember that you want to be tweaking with this how you're going to actually have it set up so if you're having the monitor in front of you make sure you're tweaking like that if you're going to be playing with the monitor behind you when you're gigging make sure you set it up like that because these are in, in many cases especially this type of speaker quite directional and where you stand is going to make quite a big difference and you don't want to necessarily set this kind of dark sounding preset up and then have it standing behind you shooting at your legs and you might not hear any of it. Or, you know, conversely, you don't want to set up this really bright sound and direct tone and then have it standing beaming directly at your ears um, and be surprised with what everything sounds fizzy. Set it up how you're going to actually have it with you on stage, I think is a, a good tip. 
So I've got a microphone just kind of nearish the speaker and probably, so this is just factory preset 1B. So this is the kind of thing that you're gonna encounter, I think, if you plug straight into an FRFR speaker without kind of tweaking anything. <laughs> Right, it's got this really, really kind of tinny sound. I think this is part of what puts people off modeling in general. That's a rectifier. That's actually quite a lot more reasonable. Okay, um, what about flexi? That's pretty good. What about an AC30? Stick some gain on it. That's not bad at all either. But you do start to get these little... So like there is kind of a fizzy element, the more gain you have, or I guess if you go that first voxy sound, though it's a bright sound anyway, but with the range master, you know, not pleasant. So things that I would do, you've got a global EQ, which can be set up to be just on the quarter inch outputs or just on the XLR outputs. That's one option. But my thinking is that you want to get it to sound good on this speaker and also send that to front of house anyway. So I would do things generally within the cab block. So here's the archetype lead that we have that's sounding a little bit on the fizzy side. <laughs> going to do is go into the cab block and start to bring the high cut at the moment it's at 12 I'm going to bring it down to 6 kilohertz <laughs> Now it's down to four. You could go down even as far as three. So, like, that's basically more or less getting me exactly what I want. Right, let's take this A. C30 tone like that's objectively like horrible at the moment if we take the high cut at the moment is it five kilohertz so I think maybe there's just no saving this one that's down to 2.5 I might change the position of the microphone on the cab I think part of the problem there is that the range master is cutting out a load of bass. I'm going to add that back in. That's a lot better.
So the moves to get that on the deranged mass that I was getting, because clearly it's cutting a load of bass, and then bringing the high cut even lower, it looks extreme. <laughs> kind of would be the only real thing that I'd say if you can get that under control this the high end stuff is where you get the the kind of craziness right and so here's a couple of my presets from the Cordy cover presets folder there's three in there at the moment I've got my kind of generic one but basically these are set up with the high cut around 3.3 kilohertz on the cab block <laughs> preset similar sort of thing the blues preset expert on this stuff I do actually gig this stuff though and I've, I've had quite a bit of experience over the years I've um, you know had the pod HD pod XT and all along w this was one of the things that I n needed to do really to keep that top end in check especially through this type of speaker where you've got a tweeter which is quite efficient at reproducing these higher end tones it's not that a real guitar amp wouldn't make these tones and stuff like that but it wouldn't be represented necessarily quite this brashly um, a PA speaker is built different to a guitar speaker all that sort of stuff it, it kind of does play a role so that's kind of my one tip that I'll give you if you've got an FRFR speaker consider going into your cab block ahead of time and drop that stuff lower than you think you might even need it so a high cut around three four five might be totally fine here depending on your types of tones if you're using a lot of gain particularly i think that's where you start to get a lot of this kind of fizziness um, there's a six db per octave roll off so that cab high cut isn't as extreme as it looks it's quite a musical um, kind of eq taper so give that a try um, i would have done more tweaking if i felt it was necessary but just having that cab block set up like that with those presets works perfectly well um, and it sounds good in, into this FRFR speaker. It sounds amp-like, um, it's doing good things that I want. Uh, I don't know how it's going to sound on the mic but I would be totally happy with that um, for a live tone and I'm not thinking oh that's a horrible digital thing, it sounds like a big full amp tone. So good news I think and front of house is going to be getting the same thing so that's also good news, right? Um, those are the things that I do um, and it's not an expensive FRFR speaker there are more expensive ones where maybe that top end might be a bit sweeter you might not get so much of the fizzy type stuff but I think it's the sort of thing that you might need to do with most FRFR speakers anyway let me know your thoughts in the comments if you want the Cordy presets that I was using in the intro and demoing here um, jump into the Gumroad folder there's three but that's going to grow over time as I build a few more of these presets which are designed to do that cover band thing 
wedding band function band where you kind of have a preset for the for the duration and maybe it's an 80s type preset maybe it's a generic maybe it's a blues preset that's the idea i'll catch you in another video soon let me know your frfr tips below if you've got them cheers